Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at a 1966 Admiral model PK1560 black and white portable series string. You may have seen me do a, a video on a 13 inch version of this a while back that was kind of a mess that had geometry issues probably due to a defect in the yoke. Another Facebook member pointed this out on the Facebook uh, television marketplace and it was local to me only about 15 miles away so I decided to pick it up because I kind of have an affinity for these things. Uh, this in all white was the first tube television that I worked on and I was probably around age 11, 10 or 11, something like that. Uh, one thing that you may be able to notice from an angle is the metal here that peels up. This always happens. Every single one of these I've come across has one of these problems. Uh, and it's no easy feat to detach and reattach it without some sort of distortion of the metal or the plastic. So it's just something you kind of learn to live with. Although it looks like it's only VHF, if you turn the dial here you can see the little UHF window up here. And it's a continuous tuner once you get past the fine tuning bits. So, this one actually works. Uh, there's not too much that we're going to need to do to it today. We're just going to open it up, take a look around on the inside, uh, clean the switches and controls in the tuner, and uh, do some resoldering on the tube sockets. But other than that, these things really don't need all that much. They were pretty well-built, rugged little sets. And for a cheap plastic portable that didn't weigh 60 pounds, uh, they were pretty decent. About the only flaw that this one has other than the peeling metal is on the top here you can see that the little base that holds the antenna in broke but I think I can get that back together and epoxy the hole over so that it's usable at least. And coming on to the back it's pretty simple. There's very basic user controls. Your vertical hold, your horizontal hold, and your vertical size and linearity. Uh, this one still had the built-in antenna connected. So let's go ahead and get the back off and take a look inside. So here we are with the back off. You can see it's loaded with compactrons. Let me get the camera off the base here and I'll take, show you a look in the inside. Very simple circuit board. Lots of dust, lots of compactrons. For the most part, all these tubes look original. There's your 33GY7, which is your combo horizontal out and damper. Uh, I think they use an 8JV8 or an 8JU8 for the oscillator. That was a common tube Admiral liked. And then more compactrons for the video and the sound. You can see there's one back there that's not too friendly to get to. And then you have your tube tuner. And there's not a whole lot to replace in these. Most of these use orange drops, brown drops, stuff like that. They don't really die all that often. Uh, on occasion, you'll have the B resistor, that sand resistor there, go open. That will yield a lights up no sound condition. Uh, but otherwise, not too much. The little explodomatic ceramic cap there needs to go. Um, but these are these are nice. On occasion you'll see one with tin whiskers in the control there, but not too often. They're very easy to service. Uh, to get the chassis out, there's a hold down screw back there. If it will focus for me. Let's go in a little bit. That quarter inch guy back there, you loosen that. and You can get the chassis out. The rest is just in a track here on the side. And they all come out pretty easy. There's a ground strap for the tuner there that you might want to undo too at the back. That guy there. Otherwise, pretty straightforward. The tuner's just mounted in there with that. And pretty much the back holds everything on. So, I'm going to get the uh, hold down screw loose. We're going to see if we can pull the chassis out. Oh yeah. And inside of here, this little bit of mess. There's a 1BC2, I think. or one Yeah, 1BC2 high voltage rectifier in there somewhere and getting this apart is a bit of a chore but basically you bust the little clips loose on this take the socket off and you can get the high voltage rectifier out they do die with high usage 
and uh, let's see what they use here for a 15 looks like 15 JP4 so yeah let's get the uh, chassis loose and take a look at the bottom side okay so once you get your your tuner ground screw loose and your tuner hold down loose take all the knobs off the front and then you can slide this out and you may wish to disconnect the high voltage lead I'm not going to discharge this one because it's been sitting a long time I'm just going to unclip the clip assuming it'll let me do that there we go and then once you've got that tuner bolt there you can kind of wiggle this out it's just a press fit and you can get this loose the speaker terminals are on the back of the transformer, which is back here. Very carefully remove them. And then you can also, you can either undo the screw up here for the ground strap, or you can just leave it as is. I'm not planning on yanking the whole damn thing, so we're just going to get it up enough so where that I can work on it. Yeah, that's basically just involves tilting it up like this. And there's the bottom of your chassis. Um, so let me show you the points of interest here. Uh, basically, all the tube sockets will need to be resoldered on this. It would be really nice if it would just calm down a little bit. There we go. So all those tube sockets will usually need to be resoldered. There's a bad joint right there. You can see that broken loose there. But for the most part, these are pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot that goes wrong with them. Uh, usually it's only the high voltage tubes that break free. Like the horizontal out there, that's pretty sketchy. The oscillator is pretty sketchy. Uh, but if you come back to the video on IF, it looks okay. That one's got a ring around the center there. It's going to bust free. And then be wary of the tuners on these because they use lots of plastic gears for the fine tuning. These ones are still intact. But if your fine tuning is stuck, don't force it or you'll break the little plastic gears. You need to free it up first. So your VHF and your UHF tuner, your continuous one. Uh, and getting this apart is just a matter of pressing on the little clip over here which I probably can't do with one hand but the clips that hold this together you push on them and then maybe stick a little screwdriver in this one and you can get it off enough to clean the tuner uh, this one must have taken a fall because it's got a crack in the little plastic base there we'll see if we can fuse that together but that's pretty much it on these there's not a whole lot to servicing them they're really easy so if you're starting out on a vintage TV set they're pretty easy to work on and if you have to change the filter, the filter can's right here. And we'll just do a quick ESR check on it. But when I ran it, it seemed fine. The can didn't get hot, so I'm not really concerned about it. I don't see many of these with dead filters. Not that it couldn't happen, just don't see it very much. So uh, let's get to uh, cleaning the tuner, cleaning the controls, doing some resoldering, and then we'll put this thing back together. So let's see if I can get the tuner apart reasonably. And sometimes a little coaxing is necessary, but usually not too much. I'm just going to pry the edge here. And undo this clip. And then that side's up. Let's see if I can do the same for the other side. Basically my goal is to get the cover up and off so that I can clean the tuner out. And these little contacts here are your main points of contention. These ones aren't too badly oxidized. The actual contact plates back up in here. Uh, so depending on how bad the tuner is, you can either very carefully go over all of these with a pencil eraser and make sure that they're nice and clean. Uh, if they're really corroded, use something like 2000 grit. Otherwise, usually deoxid or tuner cleaner works perfectly fine on these. Just don't get too aggressive with the contact plates. 
uh, because sometimes the plastic will get cruddy. So what I like to do is just lightly hose down the contact plate and just do a light spray on each contact. Get something to rotate the tuner with. And then repeat. Basically until we get all of the contacts coated. And then we'll just rotate the tuner back and forth a bunch of times. And if you can look at the surface of the contact and all that black spotty stuff is gone or the corrosion or fuzz is gone, then you can probably put it back together. You're probably going to need to do this some until it's all cleaned up. In fact, we'll do one more round here just because. So I'm rocking it back and forth on each rotation. The contacts are starting to shine up a little bit, so this will probably be good enough for now. This is also a good time if you've got sticky uh, UHF problems. Uh, to get some lubricant into these little bearings here. I wouldn't use anything too aggressive. So let's get the tuner cover back on, assuming that that's possible without too much difficulty. Oh, missed the guide there. I'm going to get one side started, and then get the other side started. And then you should be able to push it down, assuming it'll cooperate. This one's, of course, not going to cooperate. There we go. And push it down until you hear it click into place. And that should do it for your tuner. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is do some resoldering on the uh, stuff that obviously needs it. And there was a couple down here that were of concern. This one for sure has a break in it. This one's got ring around the base lead here. So does this one. You usually don't need to resolder the whole board. It's not like that Sony that I worked on where just about every connection was bad. The wave processes on these were pretty good, but they just made the mistake of using tubes and circuit boards, which is not a good mix, but it was a cost-cutting effort. Uh, you look kind of sad. You look kind of sad. There's this guy here, it's not good looking. Basically anything where there's heat or power, there's going to be a degradation of the solder. I'm 
mail guys early today. Let's see here. All right, so all that looks pretty good. There's one down here that could use some attention. Another one here. One down here at the bottom. And then finally, we'll do the most critical one that gets nice and toasty, which is the horizontal output tube. This one's loaded with uh, cracked solder connections. And it'd probably run until it got hot and then the uh, connections would break and you'd see all sorts of little problems arise. Okay. Just do this here. Just double checking to see if there's anything I missed. Usually don't find many problems underneath the shields. At least I haven't seen them yet. That doesn't mean they don't exist, but I just haven't seen them yet. Let's see. That one could use a little help. All right. Looks pretty good. I think that that should be good enough. All right, so now let's proceed on to cleaning the uh, pots and things on this. And trying to figure out a way you guys can better see this maybe like this yeah not sure here problem is is uh, poor lighting and viewability these love to get tin whiskers in them let me see if there's a way that I can get to this without too much difficulty Oh yeah, there's that silly crack. I'll deal with that in a little bit. All right, so this is what we need to get the contact cleaner into. And there's an opening at the bottom, and I'm just going to use the deox here. these things okay so that'll do for now uh, as far as this crack Get a look at the crack here. There's not a whole lot I can do with that. What I've done typically in the past, let's get rid of the light and see if we can see it a little better without that. There we go. Is just get the soldering iron and melt the pieces of plastic together. Yeah, I'm just pushing the plastic into the crack, really. I'm getting in the surrounding melted and pushing it into the crack. And then likewise on this side, same kind of thing. Just melt the plastic, push it into the crack, let it harden. 
You can enforce it with epoxy if you want to. It's not pretty, but it will keep it from getting worse. And then obviously just clean your soldering tip off so you're not inhaling burning plastic fumes all day. All right, so that's that's that mess there. Uh, let's see about getting this in back into the cabinet. Okay, so that's more or less done. Let's see if I can find a brush of some kind to clean up this fuzzomatic. I could be like one of those meticulous cleaners that pulls and cleans all the tube, eradicating the uh, numbering and everything on them, but I'm not going to do that. Nice natural bristle brush. Alright, so now we can do the vertical hold control and the size and linearity and just note their positions before you start cleaning them. Linearity was at midpoint and height was a little bit above midpoint, like one o'clock. Okay, now I am going to replace this uh, ugly Sarah cap thing down here. Those love to die, these silly things here. They explode and they leave a mess, because all they are is a paper cap with a ceramic shield around them. So that's a point one. Let me get another point one. We'll just cut the old one out. Then uh, hook a new one in there. It's a decoupling to ground off the B voltage, and when they short and go kablooey, they make a mess. So, better not to make a mess. It's a high failure rate part, just change it out, it's easy. I think there's actually two more need to be changed out too. Uh, those are back in the sweep section though. This one may have films, this one may not have films, I don't remember. Let's get a tool. And I'm just going to make a little eyelet. that I have something to stick on to the old lead, like that. Oop. And we'll solder this bad boy in here. The loop makes for a nice strong connection and a large amount of surface area for the solder. You really want to do that. That ensures that it's not going to bust free. <laughs> All right. Make another loop. This one's easier to do since I can just wrap it around the thing. And then solder that guy in and trim off the excess. All right, so that takes care of the tuner cap. Um, let's see here. This one does, in fact, have their hiding back there. Let's see if I can 
get in on it so you can see it. See those little guys lurking back there? I think those are 1,000 volt B filters maybe? I forget. Anyways, uh, it's a good idea to change those out. Let's see if I can get this apart well enough to do that. So they don't make this one easy for you. The caps are actually soldered here. So you've got these two leads and then there are two more leads underneath this shield. Although I think I should be able to get at that without taking up the shield. And then we can see about stuffing some new caps in there. But not exactly the easiest place to service and get to. I can get to this part. This is the easy part because it's right here at the edge of the shield. Yeah, we'll just undo this mess like this. And then underneath here is a little trickier because I gotta fish the fish the solder wick up in there. There's one. Let's see if I can get the second one undone it's gonna be a stretch okay so it looks like it's desoldered let's see if we can pull them out all right, so there they are. Let's see if I can get them out of here. There's one. That's a point oh four seven. And then there's this one, which is a point oh two seven at one thousand. And so basically what you do for these is, if you don't have the 1,000 volt caps, uh, you would take two .047s. Um, actually, you could probably take a .033 and a .068 in series uh, and get your .027 at 1,000. Let's test that theory. All right, so the LCR meter says that a .033 and a .068 in series yields .022 so not quite what I want I need a .027 so let's undo these we can probably do the .1 that we just pulled out in series with a .027, that'll, or a CO 047, that'll probably do it. Let's try that instead. So a .1 and a .047 in series, that's going to yield .025, that's close enough. .025 at roughly 1200 volts with the two 630 volt capacitors in series. So. Uh, that's what we're going to do is put these two together and it's just going to be a matter of twisting some leads, soldering them, and I think I might put like a protective sleeve over it like shrink tubing or something so there isn't a voltage potential that contacts anything. Alright, let's focus on that for a moment. <laughs> it's even going to let me. Alright. Maybe you can see in the bottom of the frame. Camera's not wanting to cooperate today. Let's solder that up. And then I'm just going to cut off the center lead here, which just went flying into the chassis. That's great. And I'm going to fold over this lead here. So that's kind of out of the way. And you can see that it doesn't quite reach the board. So what I'm going to have to do is 
is add an extension I'm just going to solder on an extension let me prop this up a little bit so we can you can kind of see what I'm doing here the camera doesn't want to hold steady today so this is how it's going to work we'll put a lead extension on here I'm going to solder the other end get this at the right angle so it attaches properly trying to hold still as possible so I don't weaken the joint okay so there's our lead extension I'm going to get some heat shrink and put that over it alright so I'm going to slide the heat shrink over this as we can see now that's like that and I think maybe I'll get another piece of heat shrink to put over this so that potential isn't uncovered and really the goal of this is just to keep it safe so that there's less of a probability of something screwing up so I'm gonna put the sleeve on it like that see that there that way there's no possibility that that exposed lead is gonna screw with anything and then finally let me get the .047 and with the .047 the lead spacing is close enough that I can probably just squeeze it onto the board uh, but really we have to we have to find out if that's possible let's see if I can get a good view for you guys here yeah it's not really easy to see it's that thing down in there C206 so I'm probably not going to be able to get it in the holes because the camera will be in the way let me see if I can get this up a little bit and back and probably the answer to that question is no let me tighten this up here I can look at my palm for a second nope it's not going to stay let's try this Nope, that's not going to work either. All right, hold on. I got to stick this thing in the circuit board. All right, well, anyways, it's in the board. I'll show you once I get done soldering this stuff in. One more kind of tuck back in here. Okay. I know it's like really hard to see all this, and I apologize for that, but limited places to stick the camera. So there are the caps. You can see them mounted down in there vertically. So that will make them happy. Oh, and here's another high voltage resistor that, if it opens, will kill the set, your surge resistor. So anyways, uh, now that we've done all this mess, let's uh, focus on getting the chassis back in the cabinet here. Assuming it will let me do that. My camera is not cooperating today. Okay, just slide this back in, and of course, 
don't forget to hook up the sound. It's always that embarrassing moment when you put it all back together and you go, crap, and then you hook up the speaker. That goes in there. Slidey, slidey. Tuner. I'm going to work that back into there, push everything forward, assuming it will cooperate. Is it going to cooperate? It doesn't look like it will. Something is causing that to hang up. Okay, that's that. Let's hook up our high voltage lead. All right, that's in there. Okay, let's get our ground strap free. Operate for me. I'm just going to stick that there for now. I'm more interested in getting the main chassis screw there back inside. This is where the hemostats save your butt. All I have to do is hold the thing here with the hemostats. while I thread the screw. Handy tool to have if you're getting into tight spaces. Yeah, let's make sure there's nothing else floating around in here. Oh, there's the ground screw that just fell out. your daily dose of rice. Yeah, let's get this one in here. Assuming it will cooperate. Alrighty. There goes that. That's all in there and happy. And then let's go ahead, I forget where we were at on the display, somewhere around 26, I think. I'll do a quick check. When you're putting the knobs back on, you'll have to re-index this very likely. Okay, so we need to turn that all the way down like that. Let's check and see that it goes to the right spot. It really doesn't matter because, you know, no analog UHF anymore. But I just like to see that it's close to correct. The tuner feels nice and solid now. And let's go ahead and put our knobs back in. And they're off center. Why are they off center? Let's see, did this not fully seat? Let's loosen this just a smidge. See if we can't get this better aligned. Something about it does not want to seat. 
There we go. Okay. That should be straight. Bits of debris falling in here and out. So I'm going to turn this upside down and give it a shake. Make sure there's no stuff on the inside. Okay. Now in theory the knobs should go on, and they do. Okie dokie. There we are. All nice and happy. You can call it that. So the next thing to do is to see if it actually runs. Because knowing my luck, something will have changed. And let's see if she starts. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the machine to the isolation transformer since it is a series string set. And let's see if it runs. Tubes are lighting up, that's a good sign. There we go. Nice bright raster there. It tries to get channel 6. Obviously since I don't have any antenna attached it's not going to do much. Let's, uh, let's hook a box up to it. See what we get. Okay. Box is still booting up. All right. It's a decent looking picture. A little twitchy there. Horizontal is locked. Enter the Golden State with real California dairy. Fox 5 News, sponsored in part by Jan Pro Cleaning and Disinfecting. Hi, I'm Jennifer Ball. At Ball Auto Group, we have something Not bad to looking. We have a huge selection of kids. I don't even really need to mess with the geometry. It looks pretty good. All at Ball. Thank you for your years of support. I look forward to seeing you here at Ball Auto Group. See the San Diego Gulls, Sunday at 5. Very cool. Willie Geist is next. I mean, I could mess with it some, but it really doesn't need anything. 925 now, free school lunches for many students in the U.S. will continue through the next school year. The USDA extending its waiver program until June of 2022. In addition to that extension, schools will also be reimbursed more for each lunch. They so, it looks pretty nice. And with the uh, new couple of film caps in there, it should last a while. A little bit of overscan, but that doesn't really surprise me. But, uh, yeah. So this is a nice little addition to the collection. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. More stuff to come. Bonus footage. If you're curious about the antenna, I had to very carefully pull the retaining bracket out and reinsert the half that was still alive back in here. And now I'm probably going to cover this up with some form of uh, bracing and JB weld. 
but I was kind of out of time on the camera and so I just saved this for another day and uh, it's in here so I'm gonna make up some epoxy or JB weld to go around it to just kind of hold it in place and it's not gonna look pretty but the antenna doesn't matter anyway since we're not on analog TV anymore but I know a lot of you were probably curious like hey why didn't you fix the, the TV antenna well kind of ran out of time this morning and didn't want to break it into a multi-part so that's where that's gonna go and uh, it'll still be kind of ugly but it'll keep the antenna from popping out of its socket so anyways again thanks for watching more bonus footage so here's what I do I get these little leads hot and I melt them into the plastic over here crisscross them all to make a nice platform to stick the JB weld on and then uh, we'll cover the JB weld and let it dry so there it is with the first round of epoxy set up as soon as that hardens I'll put a second coat on top and uh, then I'll paint it black and see how it turns out all right so there it is all black and whatever and as soon as the paint dries it'll probably dry with a little more of a, a satin finish so it's not great but it'll hold together it'll keep the thing from coming apart again so that's that that's the end of the Admiral back onto the shelf until I want to use it